following presentation is for educational purposes only. All of the symbols, trading ideas, and live trading are for demonstrational purposes and are not recommendations or trading advice. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. All of the information and opinions expressed by third-party guests are their own and are not necessarily those of Ninja Trader LLC. Trading futures involve substantial risk and may not be suitable for everyone, and trading futures can result in losses greater than the initial required margin. Traders should only trade features with risk capital. Risk capital is money that you can afford to lose without jeopardizing your financial security or current lifestyle. You can find additional disclosure information on the Ninja Trader website. All right, we are back with Traders Workshop, and we are joined in the studio, not in a studio, but in his own studio, live by Ant with Anthony Drager, Edge Trading Group. Anthony, good morning. Jim, good morning. Good to see you, my friend. This has been the first time we've been on camera together for 10 years, 15 years? Yeah, we. Tr I try to keep it every a decade or two with you. <laughs> well, so once every 10 years is enough right yeah we're on schedule so see you in 2035 wow well it's great to be here with you uh, um you know just when i moved over to ninja trader and you know i saw that you were here already with the ecosystem and everything i was pleased i, I couldn't believe it i was like this is awesome well i yeah i, I appreciate the things you said i'm one of your favorite people is that what you said at the end yeah, of your last session okay yeah. thank you yeah. All right. Well, because you're because you're 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 honest in what you say, right? Mm -hmm. You're there's a there's a lot of trading educators out there. You got to be careful of, right? But you're you're pretty honest uh, with what you say, and and you explain stuff in a way that even I could understand. So <laughs> that's a good thing. Did did Jack Rose introduce us? Jack Rose, probably. Yeah, that sounds familiar. You know, I've been in this business, and this is kind of like part of you know the, the, this segment that is unique because I started on the floor, okay? And before computers or electronic trading was around. So when I started, I was, my goal was to be a pit trader and took classes and did a lot of things that even though I was at the CME and the Board of Trade, you think every class and educational resource you had would be the right, you know, information, but it wasn't. So I made the mistakes that a lot of people make that, uh, you know, you don't always learn the right stuff first, but you don't know that, right? You don't know what you don't know. And so there's so much information out there. And even at the CME, I would take a class or two, and it was irrelevant to helping me do what I was trying to do, right? And, and find some sort of advantage. Now, I was in the exchange and in the business. So it's, it's relevant because so many people, everybody has to start somehow. And unfortunately... Because you don't know what you don't know, people kind of start the wrong way first and don't realize it and sometimes never get around to learning what's important. Um, and that kind of like segues me into, I did a I did a survey with my group a couple weeks ago, anticipating coming on with you guys today. And one of the questions or the question was, what is, you know, what is some of the things, what are some of the things that you learn when you started? And um and when people are forced to kind of think about that, then they realize, well, that was a waste of time. Maybe this was good. So one thing that came up that is not irrelevant is support resistance and how a lot of people eventually early on in their trading journey will get to that with respect to everybody pretty much has a line on their chart or lines on their chart where they think there's going to be some activity when price gets there. And so the words and definitions support resistance come out pretty early in their in their journey. Would you agree with that, with, with the experience you've had speaking with traders over the years? Support resistance is something early on in, in, in people's education? It is. I mean, and not only because it's a little bit easier to explain, but because it's important. Because we look, I, we look for areas of interest on a chart, whether you're using pivots or Fibonacci or whatever, but a candle pattern really, or even an open high, low, close uh, chart, really show you where prices is being rejected, where buyers are overpowering sellers, and those areas of interest you could, you could draw on a chart. Yeah, and so 
then there's always deviants like, okay, spore resistance, it could be important, it is important, but then the spider web of paths include, well, there's all different ways people come up with them, right? All different methods to, to create them. And then the other issue becomes like, well, what do I do when price gets there? Uh, wh what do, how do I react to them? Because not every time is support going to work and, and, and price going to react and rally from it. And then oftentimes, I think people could relate to this. You have a price that you think is going to be support. It works beautifully, but you missed it. It came right above where you wanted to get long and the market just took off. So what happens is you miss a lot of the winners, but then catch all the losers because when your support area doesn't work, it rips right through you, right? And you don't have a chance to get out or it's an immediate loser. So when you, I want people to start thinking that you want higher probability in your trades picking areas, okay? But also understand that if you find yourself in a spot where you miss a lot of the winners, and a lot of the times the support worked beautifully uh, and catch all the losers. That's not going to be a winning strategy. You're going to have the best line in the sand. It's not going to be a winning strategy. So what I wanted to do today and then kind of build off this in the next few weeks, because from what I understand, I'm going to be here for the next few Tuesdays, uh, build on it to go a little deeper so people could use this kind of uh, or understand it immediately, Jim. So you don't have to, to watch this week to, to understand next week and so on. But it goes back to the question why, uh, w when you get into learning any technique or concept, if you don't understand why it works when it works, you have no chance. So that's kind of where, I don't know if you could see my screen now, if I could just run through this first slide. Is that being yep. shown, Jim? Yes, sir. I do this because in all my years in, 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 um, you know, given presentations and everything, this one's always come back where where it resonates. And that is an image of my family and I. I'm the youngest of eight kids, right? Born and raised right outside Chicago. And I bring this image up because my dad said something. That's me on the left here. And that's my dad here in the lower right. He said something and all my old, older, much older siblings, like I said, I'm the youngest. But he said something to, to my older brothers. And then I just remember him saying this growing up. And I'll tie it right into trading. He says, if you know how, you'll have a job. But if you know why, you'll be the boss. And he didn't make that up. He must have heard it somewhere. But he, I, I just remember him saying that. And so many people miss the why in any technique that they're trying to learn. So why support resistance? And if you start thinking about trading through the eyes of other people's positions, because everyone's either long or trying to get long, Short or trying to get short, but what does that mean? So my next bullet here is longs equal what and short equals what? Um, why price goes up or down has to be a question you have an answer to. You're trying to predict everybody in here. We're all trying to do the same thing, no matter what your time frame. We're all trying to predict what's going to happen next with price, whether it's a, a day trade or an investment. But why does it actually do what it does? And most people, even those that have been uh, trading for a while, cannot answer that correctly. And then how could you use this now? And I don't mean use it now where you're going to have winning trades right out of the gate, but using the information now. Because too many people, they, they learn stuff, Jim, but they don't understand it. And one of the reasons why it's difficult to understand trading concepts is because the right ones are often opposite of conventional wisdom. And that's why people learn the wrong stuff first. Um, but I want to keep it super simple, but the and also get this point across that simplicity is actually the most important part of trading with respect to the basic stuff. And why? Because the basic stuff is skipped in people's initial uh start in their journeys they skip the basic so, stuff so and we, they have do you think bad feeling. do you think do you think they skip the basic stuff because um they just try they want to leapfrog over to the advanced stuff because they think they'll be more successful that way no i think they leap it because they they're, they they don't realize they're leaping anything they're just following the, the the path of least resistance and the path of least resistance probably in anything but including trading is the the bright lights right the marketing uh, if you do a search on trading education, the people who come up first aren't necessarily the best. 
they are the best at marketing. They are the best at at search, uh, qualifying their searches and search terms. But but I don't think it's it's they don't know what they don't know, right? So then they're they don't realize they're leaping anything, and that's why it's important. Like if if you at least understand why things might be important, you could get to whether or not it's relevant. Because in your job of predicting what's price go, what price is going to do next, you have to be able in your gut to say, I could see why this is an advantage. Because if you're not looking for an advantage, that's the way, that's the reason why the name of my company is Edge Trading Group, because that word was always synonymous in the business, even back when it was on a trading floor, is what edge do you have an edge? Do you have an advantage? Because if you don't, then you're competing with a lot of people that are going to be wrong together. So you have to have some semblance of an advantage. That's where people have to get, and you get there faster if you know why something might work when it works. And and so I think profile is another popular theory people try to learn. To your point, I think people gravitate to, to profile volume and market profile because it seems like it's comfortable or it gives me this understanding and rationale of why price is going to do something next. But let's face it. Predicting price is like predicting the weather. They're not, meteorologists admit they're not that accurate in their five-day or 10-day forecast, right? They're having reasons why they're going to be wrong, but yet they give them. So price is the same way. The further out you're trying to predict, the more you're guessing. So you have to bring things in and realize, am I using a technique that gives me a probability to know if I'm right or wrong ASAP? Uh, because there's always good reasons why you're wrong if you're trying to predict something five days or at the end of a month or anything else like that. And I would imagine most ninja trader uh, traders are shorter time frame day traders, okay, on the future side. And you don't have to be, but you got to get good at being consistent at predicting what's going to happen in the next 30 seconds before you're going to get good predicting what's going to happen in the next 30 minutes or 30 days, right? You want to be the, the whole definition, Jim, of a good location, and it starts at some good support resistance. The whole definition of a good location is having a trade go your go your way ASAP. The best location is when you took no heat and it started going your direction pretty quickly after you opened it. Nobody, and think about this, nobody puts on a trade and says, well, I'm going to take 10 points of heat this isn't going to work for about an hour, and then it's going to start going my way. Well, nobody says that. Nobody thinks that, or they wouldn't put it on. They'd wait an hour. So everybody's opening a trade with the thought that it's going to go their way pretty quickly, or they wouldn't open it there. You know what I mean? So just circling back to the why, why does price go up or down? If, Jim, if people weren't taking positions, getting long, getting short, if there weren't a lot of positions being opened, then there's not going to be a lot of positions being closed. There's not going to be any movement. When we have a slow day where it's a tight range, it's because there isn't a lot of interest of people getting long or short. And that's one of the that's why price isn't going anywhere. And and if you think about it, in my second bullet bullet on the uh, screen here, longs equal what? And this goes back to understanding why support works when it works, why resistant works when it works. What do longs equal with respect to what they have to do next to exit that long position? They become yeah, they're, sellers. They're sellers, right? They're sellers. You say that because you've been in the business a long time. There are many people in here that would know that pretty quickly. But then what does it understand? How do you build a strategy or a story? Forget about a strategy. How do you start building a story as to a probability of what's going to happen next by looking at markets through the eyes of other traders? Everybody looks at the market through their own eyes, through their own opinions, which is nonsense because you people have to detach themselves away from their opinion. Where do you think it's going? I tell people, it's not what I think. It's what I think the market is thinking. I'm just trying to read it. So it's not my opinion, Jim. It's the market's opinion. I'm just trying to read it. Maybe I'm poor or good at reading it. But once you start attaching ideas and trades to your opinion, what happens? you become more emotionally attached to it. Yeah, but Anthony, I mean, as human beings, we have this thing called cognitive bias, right? So, 
you know, I thought my uh, I thought my son was going to be uh, you know Olympic freestyle wrestling champion when he was in high school. That, you know, it was my bias. I, you know, it was my dad's bias, right? And we have that in trading too. We have this preconceived idea that hey, today's going to be an up day, so I'm going to try to buy. Today's going to be a down day, so I'm going to try to sell. And that's that's the psychology part that you're saying. Just erase that. Just forget about that. Erase it because that's one of the reasons why it's going to affect what you do next, and you become you become subjective in in, in while you're trying to be objective. Here, I give you a quick story. I'm with my wife and daughter, and my plan when I go to the store with them, and this happened yesterday, is I'm not going to buy everything or anything they want. I've got a good reason to say no or not yet, or I don't like it. That's my objective, right? opinion as to my game plan but in reality objectivity goes out the window right so that's how you have to think when you're in a trade all your preparation all what you think could happen that's when that's the objective you thinking once the you know what it's the fan and you have two things going on you have the ability to be right or wrong and the ability to make or lose money two of the most powerful uh 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 concepts of of what makes people emotional so now you are trying to be objective doing something that's anything but when you have a chance to be right or wrong or a chance to to uh make or lose money so you have to begin to strip out the attachment of that decision how could you be objective when you're not supposed to be people don't plan for that that's why you have to default to some sort of training if you don't know why support works when it works you're you're going to have Zero chance being consistent playing it. You're going to have zero chance finding qualifications, when to step out of the way, when to say, hey, my support price isn't important. The area is. And now I'm looking at real time to read what should happen next. And I couldn't get this information an hour ago or even 30 minutes ago. So you can do all the preparation in the world that you want. Your best information, if you know how to find it and how to read it, is going to be what's going on right now. And I keep circling back to why this business is uh, uh, oftentimes you, you don't do what you say you're going going to do. You know, part of it is you don't plan on the emotion that's going to be involved, but also people don't have a ready aim fire progression. They get ready with their opinion, bullish or bearish. They get they they don't realize that maybe their line in the sand or support resistance is their aim where they sit up in their chair. They get ready to trade. But they don't have a good fire in that progression. They don't have a qualifier. Um, so they probably have poor support resistance that don't have any probability anyways. You brought up Fibonacci, and I know you were just throwing examples out. But my old joke about Fibonacci is the only thing I like about Fibonacci is that he was Italian. Other than that, I think all his lines and those lines are are um, arbitrary. Many stuff, a lot of lines that people have on their charts are either derived from from math or things that don't really create an edge or advantage that that line or that price matters so if you don't understand why that line is there then you're going to have no ability to to trade it and execute on it and then you don't even have a qualifier to know when to actually trade it and when to step step out of the way or when to jump that price a little bit because you're seeing things that are happening at 31 even instead of 29 half or instead of 30 half. the point is go go back to why does support work when it works when when uh when you have support and it works and i think a lot of people could understand this this question or this conversation when you have support when it works that means there must be a lot of buyers that come in at that price right that makes sense does that mean that a lot of people are buying it at that price? No. It means a lot of people want to buy it at that price. There's a difference. Price moves up not because people are buying it, but because people want to buy it and they can't get filled. If three people want to buy a house, only one's going to get it, but the other two are influential in the price of where that house went. Same thing in trading anything. So, 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 Go ahead. but let me hang on, Anthony. So, does. So what you're saying, I think, so we have cumulative delta and we have uh, we have time and sales, right? That shows us, a, and then we have the trading ladder too. That shows us are the are the trades happening on the, on the offer? Are the trades happening on the bid? And do we see that pressure uh, realize a change in in market direction? 
Right, but the things you're talking about are things that already happen, and there's some value to that. But when things already happen, many people already see it and or could see it. We are in a predictive business. We have to create probability of what's going to happen because that is what's going to give you any kind of um, accurate assumptions as to where price is going to go to say it's going to probably rain this afternoon. The reason why, and and if that information was on the chart, then most people would have it. But you have to have, when I say accurate assumptions is, if you know that you need buyers to come in to buy support, I don't want to see those people already buying it. I want to anticipate they just sold it, maybe to get short, so they have to buy it. It goes back to this screen share of after you're short right here, what are you? You're a buyer. So what I want to see at potential support, Jim, is shorts trying to play that thinking price is going to go lower. So they're playing it from the short side and they're potentially getting stuck. Why? Because that's what creates the dynamic to create the buyers that will run in and run this price up. And then you get that V-shape or that turn off of that particular area. Do you see how this kind of all falls together? It's what are people doing position-wise? Not every buyer is opening a long or every seller is opening a short, but you often get people stuck or short in a hole was a, was a saying back in the day. Short in the hole is if you look at a chart, you could see that you, you, a V-shape out of an area and people who got short down there are stuck. They're stuck in that what looks now like a hole in, in, in that chart pattern. You need that. You need some semblance of people getting short at where you think price is going to have support. And the reason is because you now understand after you get short, you become a buyer. Another thing that happens after you get short, Jim, what do you want price to do? You want it to go lower. What if it's not? Now, not only are you a buyer, but you're an emotional buyer and you have to buy it. Because when people get short, they want to buy it, but they also have to buy it. Because at some point, people got to cover their positions. So you are... You are seeing on a chart, when you read price action this way, when you read it through other people's positions, you are seeing the emotion of what people have to do. And anytime people have to do something, they become more emotional. When they're more emotional, they're less objective. They do some really, you know, irrational things. You need to see shorts get stuck at support that creates the buying that's going to send it up. Hopefully people are kind of so understanding just think of other people's positions first and not the whole idea of buyers and sellers and delta and, and sell pressure into the bid and everything else like that. You have to start assuming that you could read the, the notion of people loading up on the wrong side. That's going to create the action, the market action, and, and answer the question why price goes up in the first place. Not so people buying it, but people who have to buy it. So let me ask you this question. So let's let's envision a scenario where um, we keep testing support, testing support, testing support over a long period of time, testing support. And, the, and, and now I'm looking at this chart and I'm going, all right, wait, is this support so solid that it's time to buy? Or am I looking at this chart to say, hey, we're going to we're, we're eventually going to just smash through this support and it's time for me to sell? Well, you bring up the conventional wisdom is, well, that's great support. Look, at it works so well. And most people would come to that conclusion and they would be, they'd be wrong. Going back to, if most people could see something, then it's not an advantage. When support works that many times, it's like running into a door with your shoulder. Each time you run into it, the hinges are getting more and more loose. And at some point it's going to open up. So the more a price is tested, the less likely it's going to work. And the reason is, is because other people, so many people see it work as just great support they get loaded up on the long side of it. You know what I mean? And and so when people get loaded up because, wow, this is great support, look at it work three times, it's the opposite of what we just talked about. When people get loaded up long at support, they become what? If you look at the first bullet point, longs equal sellers. So yeah. a lot of people are playing support. A lot of people are getting long. A lot of people now become sellers, and that's the reason why it wouldn't work on the fourth or fifth test. You don't want to see an area that looks like support and it's obvious. Because obvious things don't work because too many people are playing it. 
if I had a big uh, a group, right, of kind of novice traders, and I said, do you want to be long with a lot of other people? Most people would initially say, yeah, let's all be long. Opposite. You don't want the competition. Because if a lot of people are long, Jim, a lot of people have to sell it. If a lot of people have to sell it, that's going to be hard. That's the opposite of what you need for price to go up. Too many longs, too many sellers. Too many sellers, how is price going to go up? You have to start. That, that has to make sense to people like the back of your hand, or you're never going to use anything consistently. So support resistance, number one, is one of the you know more popular things people will stumble upon early in their journey, but they don't often understand why it works when it works and what would be the best uh, inputs to come up with this. And and believe it or not, it's it has nothing to do with what you see that everybody else could see. It's understanding of other people's positions and trying to see people, if you want to get long at support, other people get loaded up short and become the buyers that send it up. You don't want the competition. You don't want price to spending too long at support. Why? If it's, spending, if it's spending too much time at a support area, Jim, too many people have the opportunity to get long, right? All right, I got it. I got Play it. I rebound. got it. It sunk, it sunk in my brain. Thank you. I can't wait till next week so we can continue this conversation because this has been awesome for me. I appreciate it, and it's been awesome for everybody else. Anthony, how do people how do people find you? Edge the best trading. way is to go to go to YouTube and search Edge Trading Group and watch some of the short videos I have on there. So do that, and then you get a a, a much better feel to to what I teach and how I teach and things like that. So you could cut through anything else that people have on their site, and there's all all good stuff on there too. But get into the channel and watch short videos explaining a lot of this stuff, but with charts and everything else underneath it. Awesome. Well, Anthony, thanks for your time. We're up against time now. I got zeros on my counter. I got to go to the next segment. But appreciate it, man. Have a great uh, rest of your day and look forward to talking to you again. All of the symbols, trading ideas, and live trading are for demonstrational purposes and are not recommendations or trading advice. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. All of the information and opinions expressed by third-party guests are their own and are not necessarily those of Ninja Trader LLC. Trading futures involve substantial risk and may not be suitable for everyone, and trading futures can result in losses greater than the initial required margin. Traders should only trade features with risk capital. Risk capital is money that you can afford to lose without jeopardizing your financial security or current lifestyle. You can find additional disclosure information on the Ninja Trader website.